Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Joe from Workbench, and uh, I'm thinking about trying to do a tutorial for this week. I was kind of hesitant to do this one, mostly because it's not really super interesting. Except, I recall when I was first trying to figure out a good way to do this, and uh, I looked it up for a little while and did some research and found pretty much nothing on it. And so I'd like to show you guys the, uh, the process that uh, Severo and I had have come up with to um, work on a project together and transfer files and stuff between each other without having it be a super pain. So uh, let's do that. So the first step is an organized project folder. Um, we normally use uh, Dropbox uh, to keep our stuff working and since you know, we're working in the office together or whatever, it syncs um, using LAN, so that's nice. So this is pretty much how I have my projects set up. Um, I have my project folder. I'll have uh, an audio folder that I'll put in the uh, you know mixes or just the straight VO scripts, all of that kind of stuff. If I have anything the client has sent me, I'll make a reference directory. I usually put everything with an underscore so that it stays at the top so that my project file usually floats down below everything. If I have any graphics, I make a graphics folder. If I have any renders, renders go in, in a render subfolder too. But let's open this up and uh, See how I lay it out in After Effects. Normally in here, I'll put in my audio and I do the same kind of thing, underscore, uh, you know, you cut your color palettes and all that kind of stuff that you're gonna use in everything. You know, you, this is the only part that basically one person is like responsible for on their own. So what I'll do from here is I'll uh, open up my audio waveform and I'll play it and I'll put some markers in. I'll click here, I'll put a marker right at the beginning. And this will be 01 intro, right? So I know that this goes to the next marker. So what we're gonna do is play it. And a lot quieter. Things break, get dirty, scuffed, or damaged. It's a lot to keep up with. Pages on demand understands how difficult it is. All right, so that'll be a couple of markers, right? So this will be uh, section two, and we'll call this logo because that's what it's going to be. And then this will be 03, and I don't know what it is yet, so I'm just going to call it whatever for the purposes of this tutorial. And that's that from here to here, and then 30 frames. It's gonna give me handles so that uh, when Seb and I work together, I can say, hey, this is gonna be, you know, at 187 is when I'm out or whatever. You know, if there's something complex, it's easy to say, hey, I'm completely out by this point or you need to bring in your stuff at 189 or whatever. All right, so we're gonna right click, do trim comp to work area, All right? And then I'm gonna go file, save as. We're gonna call it 01A intro. And uh, so instead of calling this like intro 02 or whatever, this lets me keep them all in order when I get to import them later. So that's why I put like the version as A instead of, you know, the version as one or whatever. It doesn't let you increment and save, which kind of sucks, but it's pretty easy to do on your own. So it's not a big deal. Save, I'm gonna replace that since I did it already. All right, so that's our first thing with the handle, right? So uh, we're gonna rename this also to 01A and intro. We're gonna follow that same convention. I'm gonna make a new folder. I'm gonna call it assets. Could have done this beforehand too in the main comp before you started assembling these, but I don't put an underscore because it'll stay right under there. So we have that, right? And then I'll go back to the other one, or sometimes I'll just undo until I get to where it was, but all right. So then I'll go 30 this way, and then I'll go to the next marker, K, K, one, two, three, N, trim comp. We're gonna go save as. It's usually a good idea to do this first because a lot of times you'll just do it and then uh, overwrite the one that you're working on but that's why we use Dropbox, or at least one reason why we use Dropbox. All right, and then I'll change this again, O2A, and this one was called Logo, New Folder, Assets. And I'll put everything in here, if it's, you know, if it make, After Effects makes a solid folder or whatever, it all goes in there. And then we'll go back to our original. Now I have, you know, everything in here that I needed into those other comps, right? any graphics, any of that kind of stuff you can put right in here as you do this process and they'll be in all of your comps already ready to go. And then Seven and I will go off and we're anim we'll animate everything, you know, hey, this is where this goes and that's where that goes, whatever. Come back, hey, let's assemble this thing. Put this in here. I know that one goes right to the beginning, so that's fine. Next one. O2A. This one's easy. I just go back to my markers, up three, Hold shift and page up to do that. Put it right there. So now you'll see this is at 142. We'll open this up. This comp will also be at 142. So now we're kind of like time locked. Let's say I go back in, right? And often what I'll do is, let's say I have like a background color or something that I can animate on. I'll do that and I'll put it like a gray and uh, or I can even actually grab it since we have this in here, right? We got the 
color palette. Let's uh, pick something. Say my background color is this, right? Get rid of that. What I'll do is I'll make this a guide layer. Now, what that'll do is make this basically transparent in any other comp I put it into. So I can do all of my animation on here, have, you know, like a background that I can actually see some stuff on. And say I take this and I you know, animate the position, maybe not there, animate it across over here or something, you know, whatever, something simple. I'll save this, right? Let's say this is, this is my client revision or something. I'll save as, and I'll go O2B, save that. Make sure this is named O2B, command K, I'll get to that window. Right, close this up, save it. So now when I close this and go back into the original comp, say, okay, I know two A has changed. A lot of times I'll dump the old ones into an old folder so I know which ones are new. Um, Cause it actually doesn't reference these. It just kind of opens them up into After Effects like as if they're just, you know, were there to begin with. And so because of that, uh, it doesn't really matter where you move these afterwards. So it's kind of nice too, cause you can keep your versions intact. So we'll open this up twirl that down and all you got to do is click on that and hit command option and forward slash replace it so now it's replaced and you can see that the background's not there so if I have a background in here so you have that same background down here under everything I'll grab that one then I can go through and have it there and if there's something in this comp and there's something in this one and they both animate together or whatever I can easily uh, make sure that there's no background in it so you can match things up so a lot of times like several leave like hey I got a square it's this size at this point you need to animate it out or you can animate it whatever so that way you can carry your transition through without having to you know have one person only able to work on it um, the other helpful thing too is that because this is also transparent say I have you know just a square or whatever um, I can go in here and move it in say I'm gonna do this and it's gonna come in you know here and it's gonna be down there and then this one can do the same thing, even there's nothing in there really to, to see what it looks like. But this one can, you know, be here and then it moves up, you know, so that like these two can transition together. I do a lot of things where there's like a laptop in this comp, right? And then there's like a, a screen element or like a logo or something. And so this is going to move up and uh, fill the screen and this is going to be on the screen, you know, so you can actually, you know, use that to link these two together. You can parent them together um, in here so that. The one comp can be simple. You don't have to worry about how it animates. The other one can end simply too. You can just leave all your stuff showing at the end and you can transition it out in the main comp. And then all you have to do whenever you do a new version is just change it here. Or you can just swap this one out and say you want to go back to A or whatever. You can easily import it again, go back. Hey, that thing's gone now. So every client version, basically we make a new letter. Um, our own versions, we usually keep in the same comp and then we'll do the first pass and that'll be A then client will be B and then we'll do a C pass perhaps sometimes if there's second changes or if we go back and do something else and then the client will come back and they'll be D. Um, you just keep going all the way down and uh, once you're done everything is all set you can reduce this project if you want and it'll have everything in it that you need you don't need to worry about keeping the old ones if you don't want to and that's our process. Seven and I work a lot together on animations and uh, it's easy to divvy up the work and do it this way. We did a lot of projects uh, for a client that uh, we started on initially doing a different way and over time this is basically the system that we've evolved and it's just so fast to get started and have all of your comps out and be like hey Seb I split it all up you know why don't you take section 2 take section 3 it's not a big deal the only issue that we have ever is that our Dropbox volumes aren't named the same way and so you might have to relink one file and then everything links back but if you just name your you know your drives the same it'll easily sync up without even an issue there either it's just been a great way to work quickly on a lot of stuff a lot of people ask us when we're done with a project you know how you do that and it's really not all that complicated but it's kind of hard to explain I guess like hey how'd you guys do that well uh, yeah you do this and that and whatever well you know, now here's a video that you can easily look at and see the next time somebody asks me I guess I'll just point them to this so thanks for watching guys I hope this helps you in your workflow and if you have any comments or whatever just ask them in the comments keep following us on workbench.tv for more great content thanks guys bye